one of the things you and I love to do is have a healthy debate. By the way, we do this privately. We do this publicly. We fight in public like a couple. Uh, we love to squabble. Um, you know, I usually say, let's just take it out on the bench. But then Pat always says no for whatever reason. I don't know why. You don't want to do that with me. But one of these days. One of these days. All right, buddy? You're going to do it? We're going to do it? No, we're not going to do it because we don't want to get injured anymore. We're, we're old men, Pat. Put the ego aside. Stay healthy. Keep your together. Healthy. Healthy. You need to be able to hold that baby. You know, all that baby. I hurt my wrist trying to kill a bug on a bleacher last week. So, like, we are old dudes. Like, we've got to get that through our heads. That being being healthy. But here's something that's not healthy, in my opinion, is having almost forty percent of your market covered by two companies. My God, what a terrible idea. That's a big problem. Maybe is that really what I think? I don't know, Pat. But Nvidia, thirty nine percent of its revenue comes from two customers, and some of the market seems to think. That is a bad idea. Is it a bad idea? Is it a problem that they have 39% tied up in two customers? Let's see. Maybe one of us can take that side. So, I mean, here we go. You know, you've got a company now trading at, you know, over $4.4 trillion in market cap. And here they go reporting. And in, this, in the category that was most important to the business, they put up a puny amount of growth. I know I'm being a little bit sarcastic, but a rapidly declining growth rate and an increased concentration rate with two of the customers now generating almost 39% of that revenue. NVIDIA is in a difficult juxtaposition in terms of how they're going to go forward. They are basically now becoming incredibly dependent on companies that are building products inside of their shops to compete with them. This is a very simple one for me. You basically have a challenge where you've got an already declining growth rate in the GPU market. It's going to regulate at about 20% by the end of the decade. And yeah, sure, they were up by hundreds of percent a year or two ago, but that's not the case anymore. And now you look at Microsoft, you look at Meta, you look at their other, by the way, huge customers that get them closer to 50 plus percent of all that revenue. You've got Google, you've got Amazon, you've got uh, you know, you go down the list, you got Core Weave and all these companies. But of the biggest ones, Meta, Microsoft, uh, Google, and Amazon, guess what all of them are doing? They're all building their own competitive product. We already talked about this on the show. So if I were an investor, I would think that's a big problem for me if I'm already in at a price where they're at a four and a half trillion with declining growth rates and with customers that are building products basically with the goal over time to replace NVIDIA in their shops. And of course, here you go, coming out of left field. Just yesterday, CEO of Broadcom, Hawk Tan, laid the wood, knocking the ball out of the park, announcing a new open AI custom chip. But that's just one of the chips they do because they're already doing it for Google. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be taking Microsoft forward. Now they've got open AI. Oh, and they've got ByteDance and they've got tons of other big cloud companies that are all saying, we want to vertically integrate. We want to increase our margins. We want to customize our own software. We want to control our fate. And we do not want our destiny to be in the hand of a company that's taking 73% of the margin out of every opportunity. Pat, this isn't even a debate. There's nothing to debate here. This is a problem. And if I'm an NVIDIA investor, I am nervous. I am going to be running for the hills because only five, six big customers to depend on being able to keep growing at this rate, too much pressure, too unlikely. This CapEx is unsustainable. These companies want to get the R&D credits. They want to increase their margins. They're going to all go the Apple route. They're going to vertically integrate. And this means NVIDIA's market share and growth is going to suffer. Uh, Daniel, you know, in a normal market, this might be an issue, but we're in a completely abnormal market. You have NVIDIA that has all the leverage in this relationship. And the two companies we're talking about are, are Meta and Microsoft. And if, if I look at, at both those companies, uh, their XPU hedge is, is behind everybody. I mean, my gosh, uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft made 64, um, excuse me, made, yes, yeah, May, sorry, made 120,000 uh, Mayas for the entire year of, of 2025 uh, estimate. Uh, and that, that compares to literally millions of, of NVIDIA GPUs. 
and even on the AMD side that that's that that's running, you know, close to close to a million. I mean, it's just it, it's just crazy. So there's absolutely no leverage. And then if I look at um, if I look at what's going on at Meta, you have um, if I'm looking at uh, at least the uh, the Coos, their MTIA is selling well. But let's not forget, like the first MTIA w- was really a recommendation engine. That's all it did. Right. And there's four different versions that are in market uh, uh, at the same time. And this MTIA v, uh, version three uh, will do 190,000 uh, units this well. I mean, you know, c- compared to uh, Microsoft's a lot higher. And then when you add MTIA v1, 2, and v3, um, it just, you know, it's a lot bigger. But still, in comparison to GPU and NVIDIA, it's, it's just small. So the point I'm making is that. Nvidia has all the leverage, so it's not it's not a risk um, it's not a risk at all. And then, at least on the Microsoft side, if I look at um, um, Azure Azure AI, that's pretty much optimized for um, Nvidia GPUs only. AMD GPUs are are used extensively uh, internally, a lot less for what I would call IaaS or or PaaS. Um, services. So I think just with just looking at these facts, this is why I, I, I think this is very, this is very manageable uh, for the next couple of years. Long term uh, could be very, uh, very different. And the other thing I want to look at the final case I'm going to make is, is, is the market. Looking at Meta, Meta is absolutely an absolute um, juggernaut right? They're in fact seem to be the biggest beneficiary of AI and how they've been able to monetize this. If we look at their, if we look at their, their recent earnings. So if they would decline, uh, if Meta would decline, which they're not, that would be an issue. And then let's look at Microsoft, right? I think we all agree that Microsoft is the most balanced company out there, right? They've got a smaller consumer play, but when you look at their commercial play, that's really where where it's at. So, are are them as a juggernaut going to stop anytime soon? I don't think so. I mean, barring some economic disaster that freezes business spending, so uh, Nvidia holds all the cards, and these two companies are not going to slow down uh, any anytime soon. So that concentration risk, it's not even there at least for the next few years. There we go. Uh, so what do you really think? I I don't think the concentration risk is real, but my reason's different. Uh, my reason is, by the way, that UBS report was great. Really, really great data on the chip bought and expectations. I think they're underestimating it based on our forecasts, but I do think the level of accuracy was really, really good. We'll have to see how that, that shapes up. Um, Jensen's right about A6 being canceled, delayed, but I don't think he's right about the idea that they'll never happen. I think they're going to happen. I think this is a uh, existential thing for these companies, and they're going to do it. But I do think it's going to take longer, which is going to be a benefit to NVIDIA over the next few years. Um, the biggest reason I don't think it's a problem is I still think the external workloads and the people building on small volumes and wanting to run AI in their enterprises are going to do it in the cloud. They're comfortable in, in, in CUDA, the developer environment of, of, of NVIDIA, and that basically the five or six biggest customers support like five million enterprises. And that's the big thing that I was really leaning on about why concentration is not an issue is they sell to the next five million companies. So everybody's using these clouds. I mean, one thing, if they were buying it and only using it for their own reasons, I would be really worried about that. Because that's where I think the fall off comes, Pat, is those internal workloads definitely are going to get get chopped off and they're going to go to the ASIC. But the yeah. external workloads, I think, stay with a lot of the enterprises. They're already building on NVIDIA. They're going to stay with NVIDIA. So my take, Pat, is it's really the scale is that this is really good channel distribution. They have a good channel. They have five, six, seven companies that sell to five million more companies. And that, in my opinion, is good channel strategy. And so I think that is the reason it doesn't bother me at all. Very good. What do you think? How was my argument, though? Pretty good? Pretty compelling? Yeah, it's something that, you know, we, I think hopefully the audience recognizes and appreciates. We come 
we come at these things from different angles. I know those uninformed people are like, oh, you people are the, you're the same person. It's like we are not the same person and we have com- well, not completely different views ultimately, but we might have a lot of different reasons why why we think of something. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You heard it here first. 